Well, hello again, friends. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and I'm the pastor of St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Bryan College Station. And this is Weekly Theistic Reflections, where each week I take a verse of Scripture and I unpack it a little bit. I've entitled this episode, If Evil Exists, Then So Does God. Scripture that I picked for today is Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so for a lot of people, a common stumbling block to belief in God is the problem of evil. The fact that you can look around in this world and see things that just aren't right. See things that you know deep down inside are not as they should be. And if God existed, if God was all powerful, couldn't God eliminate bad things in this world? Couldn't God get rid of evil among us? Whenever bad or tragic things happen in our life, it's natural to struggle with why would a loving, all powerful God allow this to happen to me or to my loved ones? And some people cannot reconcile the continued existence of bad things, evil things among us, and square that with the existence of a good and all-powerful God. But then we have to ask ourselves, where do we get this notion of evil from? Where do we get this idea that things are good or bad in and of themselves if not from something outside of ourselves. The fact that we have the ability to look at something and all generally agree, that's not right. That shouldn't happen. This is not how things are supposed to be. We gotta realize that that comes from somewhere. There must be a good that defines that that isn't good. C.S. Lewis was a wildly intelligent Oxford academic and having lived through both of the world wars saw a lot of the evil that the world has to offer. But it was this notion of, wait a minute, for me to have any kind of sense of evil, there must be a good that defines it. Eventually is what caused him to convert to Christianity in the end. He realized that if he could look out and see all of the bad in the world and know that deep down inside, like nobody has to teach you that this is wrong, then there must be a God that stands as a light against the darkness. C.S. Lewis came to understand that without God, nothing could be considered wrong. Nothing could be considered evil. Rape, murder, war, injustice, all of that are just, it's just words. If there is no God to say, that is not my will for your life. That is not what I intended for you. So ironically, the existence of evil among us, the fact that we can point to things and say that's not how it should be, turns out to actually be a powerful secular argument for the existence of God. For there to be opposition to the good in creation, there must be a God who defines it. And that God is overcoming the evil and the darkness among us. The question that I want you to ponder. What is something that you just know deep down is wrong in our world? Where does that understanding of wrongness ultimately come from? While you're here, I invite you to check out this video. It's a video I entitled, How Can We Know Truth? And it's kind of that next step in this conversation of, if there must be someone who defines what truth is, right or wrong, good or bad, how can we know it? Can we know what truth is really out there in the world? And where do we go to find that? Do we find that through tradition, through history, through the brightest minds of our day? Or do we find that through revelation or all of the above? So if you're interested in that conversation, I invite you to check that out. If you're in the Bryan College Station area, I invite you to check us out. We have a worship service every single Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also live stream right here so you can get an idea of our past services and how we do things over there. But if you're in the area, I'd love to get to know you. Love to do life and ministry with you. But until next time, friends, remember that, yeah, there's bad. Yes, there are things in our world that are not as they should be. But that actually proves that there is an ultimate will for this universe. And that ultimate will is God who is defining what is right and wrong. And through Jesus Christ is calling us back into the restoration 
of creation back to the original good that he first declared it to be in the beginning. So look for that. Be a part of that. See all the ways in which the light is breaking into the darkness in this world. Until next time, friends, continue to love each other well. Take care.